So we were talking about the impact of Brexit and um, what exactly is going to happen as a result of this. And uh, uh, of course, as we were recording this podcast, news came down that the court has ordered that they must, Parliament must sit and um, uh, act on this. That can't just be on the basis of a mm. of a unclear and unfocused referendum. So let's talk a little bit about the court case for a second, because we, we we've said that it's likely to be appealed and appeals will go on for some time. Mm. But what does that mean for Brexit? Is Brexit dead? It's not totally dead, but um, it's put, I think, anyway, a huge span in the works. Yeah. As if it wasn't problematic enough, the whole thing. I mean, that two-year deadline, which May supposedly was going to kick start with Article 50 in March. In March. That's never going to happen in a million years. What if she just unilaterally does it, though, as the Prime Minister? What happens then? Well, she, uh, she can't now, though. She would, I, I, don't, I don't think Europe would let her. I think the second she tried to do that, the court, it would be appealed and it would be nullified if she did Do you think, Paul, that... Um, you know that you can whip something like this i mean we know that there's a pro staying in the eu majority of mps but I, if it's a I government she, policy i think she'll try to whip it the, the question is whether she would need to go to a general election does this give her a push to go to a general election to put it in her the conservative manifesto to be able to whip it because remember it wasn't in their manifesto um, and and so it's much harder for her to whip it when it wasn't in her manifesto. Um, and you've got people like Ken Clark who are never going to be whipped. Ken Clark is not about to turn around and vote to leave the EU um, as such a, a, a Europhile. Nor is nor is the uh, the, uh, the the current uh, Hammond the the uh, the uh, Chancellor. I mean, there are so many members of the cabinet. I mean, she put the three most rabid. Brexiters and even Boris Johnson, I'm not sure how rabid he was other than he thought it was politically expedient for himself, in charge of this whole process. And they've clearly shown they're not up to it. So, um, and by the way, we should probably explain to um, members of the audience from other parts of the world that don't understand when we say whip it, we're not talking about a song. Uh, you know, we're talking, we're talking about a mandatory vote where the party literally whips votes into place and says, you will, there's an, an you know. I mean, it's a big, that, that would be a big thing, wouldn't yeah. it? I mean, um, you know, whether, well, I, it would be a huge constitutional issue about whether a big decision like this can be whipped yeah. you know forcing it through effectively and saying to the Tory MP because they've obviously got a majority in Westminster you have to vote this is a government policy you have to back us up that's what whipping means well, and, and this is where I'm not sure she can because it wasn't in their manifesto and 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 so that creates problems the, the question I have is what does this do for UK so so we've seen UK well Although, does it potentially give UKIP a lifeline? Because we've seen UKIP in this sort of death spiral, for lack of a better term, um, through poor decision. Um, has said, described them as being in a death spiral. Yeah. And, and, and so does this give them a little bit of a lifeline to say, no, we have a purpose to exist again because without us? Does this give them air? I don't know that it does because there are so many problems going on within UKIP that this may not solve, but it potentially gives them a route back in, which actually I think the door had closed to them. And I think that, that ends the thing. I don't, I don't know, it's too early to tell, but 